Hello. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Um, hello, BNVU, and welcome in. That guy's the podcast, episode seven. Wow. Today we have me and Richie. Uh, no, me. I am Richie. <laughs> <laughs> We go fuck up the intro. <laughs> we also have Tunzi, aka Farley. Hello. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, this is episode seven, and it is also part five of our "What Are You Playing?" shenanigans. Um, yeah, and who's our sponsor today, Farls? <laughs> The podcast is sponsored today by the Shinra Electric Power Company for all your sustainable energy needs. And um, do they rip the life force from the planet, yeah? Absolutely not, no. No, absolutely the not. Brilliant. Good, good. Energy good. comes from crushing up pedophiles and <laughs> getting rid of bad things. Getting rid of bad things. Anyway. Yeah. Good old shit now. Right. So, ask me what I've been playing. Uh, welcome. <laughs> Got some rare. What have you been playing? What are you playing? Um, I. <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. I do. I didn't know. I wasn't in the mood for doing the merchant voice. So it's, it's a tough. Tough one to do, to be honest. I don't even want to attempt uh, to do an impression of it. Because, like, even in my head, or if I was alone, I'd be like, oh, that's such a shit, shit impression of the merchant. <laughs> what are you, what are you buying? Like, uh, uh, yeah, just... But yeah, but it comes in more like Dick Van Dyke when I do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, what I've been playing is... I spent a good 30 minutes yesterday playing Resident Evil 6 for the first time. Ah, great. Let's talk about this because and elements of your weird OCD are already coming out uh, when it comes to the podcast. In particular, like the idea that um, <laughs> you don't play, you have to play all the games in a series chronologically. Yep. Or sometimes you just don't. And I've, uh, I've started to loosen up and abandon on that a little bit, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but a, a certain amount of time has to pass. And so I've pretty much kept up to date with Resident Evil uh, and played them as they've come out. Enjoyed most of them. And then you kind of got, I don't know, did you play 5? No, that's, that's where I stopped. Resident Evil 5 was... I was really excited for it, um, yeah. and I was actually going to go, and I was sitting playing co-op uh, with a friend, and I thought, this is brilliant, get to play through it, uh, and do it co-op. Um, but, and in my humble opinion, that co-op mode was awful. Beyond awful. So, um, the problem I found specifically with the, the co-op mode was... You got half a screen, but then you didn't even get half a screen. You got roughly two thirds of half a screen. I don't know what the math is behind that. It was half of two thirds? A third. <laughs> so you get, yeah, no, no, no. Um, yeah, one half of two thirds is one third. Okay, so one third of the screen was just blank out area. Yeah, and you got the rest of it for actual. Um, playing it um, and yeah I, I just couldn't get past the first level I then um, many many like I, I owned the gold version as well so I'd actually waited before um, playing that one um, and then many many years later uh, you and I played it and we <laughs> we get trounced by this ridiculous collection of shit that we needed to do um, and as it all turned out, uh, basically the Steam version doesn't support local co-op or something stupid like that. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, um, and it never. And the, I think the PC version just never supported 
uh, couch co-op. Yeah, I just like yeah. There, there was something where it does support it, but only if you like have a certain patch or something like that. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Really? Okay. Maybe yeah. it's modern. Yeah. Because like, sorry, just on uh, Resident Evil Five, uh, I think it's one of my favourites. Uh, but on the proviso that you are playing it couch co-op uh, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah I played it with a I played it with a friend and it was yeah it's just fantastic one of the yeah one of my favorite ones got some great boss battles the the kind of climax with Wesker and Jill is phenomenal um yeah one of my favorite ones um and yeah. then it's kind of uh, I, don't know, I don't remember it's kind of perhaps when gaming was a bit on the back burner um, and six came out I didn't don't think I picked it up straight away um, I just wasn't that interested in it and hadn't really heard anything about it uh, and then much later I picked when did it come out 2012 wow okay um, and then picked it up much later and kind of burned through it okay well I mean I went back and I, I started playing Resident Evil 5 and I was just like, this is really, really hard. I hate having to manage this other player. Um, yeah, and- 5. <laughs> I think it's one of the, it's like um, uh, almost like a, uh, what do you call them? A roguelike? Because the first time you play through 5, you don't have uh, your extra weapons, you don't have all your health um, like oh, your okay. life boosts, and so that first three levels is brutal the first time you play it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, so it was not. It's not that you're struggling. Yeah, it, it is hard. You're going to get much better, you know, as you know what's going on, and then as you kind of boost your life and all that stuff, and you go through. But yeah. Okay, uh, that that makes more sense because that first boss character didn't even seem really like a boss character, just like a guy with a big hammer. Um, uh, the guy with the nails in his head with the hood over his mouth hey, hood over. Yeah. yeah and um i uh yeah like I, I used pretty much all my ammo on him and exploded barrels and like still got fucking done in um but yeah i mean it's i just kind of feel like i know the plot i know that jill goes blonde and gets a super suit um and can somehow sprint around the 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 room and she's a boss character and then she gets saved so I was just kind of like do I, I want to go through this and I'm like, fuck it no I'll do Resident Evil 6 I heard good things I'm like anyway that's the whole point I, I basically decided to skip it go to Resident Evil 6 give this a go I'm sure I could probably play through it in a few hours and be satisfied that I've played through Resident Evil 6 am, am, I, am I wrong? uh yeah, it's one. It's it, it's weird in that it's the I think it's one of the ones you can actually just apart from the latest remakes, you can just burn through. Um, and I know I've said this every single podcast, and I need to change up my vocab. But it, it, to me, it's the arcadiest of them all. Um, you know, you sort of yeah, you pick missions from your jukebox, uh, you jump around from three different campaigns I think four different campaigns uh, and each level's fairly short very run and gun very action based um, and we'll probably come on to it for me it would not for Revelations 2 probably the least memorable <laughs> yeah like okay I will give you my rundown and my impressions of hello hello I'm on my own? No, you're not on your own. Oh, you're back. Okay. No, I don't think I ever left. Okay. Uh, but yeah, um, I'll give you my impression of the first 30 minutes that I played it for. And I, I, I was just like... I didn't have the greatest um, first impressions going straight into the game because... 
I went through all of this sort of config for the graphics and things like that. I thought, okay, cool. And then it said, set the darkness to this level. So I set the darkness to that level. I then started the game and I could see fuck all. Absolutely fuck all. It was too dark. And then like, why did you make me set the darkness this dark? That, and like, I all like... I could see, all I could hear was like Leon shuffling. Say, oh, you're going to be okay. I'm like, what the fuck is this? So, yeah, I basically had to go through, play that little bit, and get the darkness settings all set up, and then Alt F4, and just go through all of that rigmarole of setting the fucking graphics, uh, or the darkness settings, brightness settings, whatever. Is it brightness or darkness? It's brightness. Brightness. <laughs> brightness settings. Putting it way up so that I could actually see what the fuck was going on in the screen. Yeah, sorry, you were saying. Uh, it, this one starts quite dark. I think on purpose. I found um, with all the recent Resident Evil games, probably going back to five, maybe. You know where they start with dark setting. They all configure it way, way too dark. So if you know, if you follow it so that the whatever the symbol is barely visible, um, it's always too dark. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like, I, I, I thought I'd give it a go, you know. Actually, no. Um, in fact, the Resident Evil Three, Resident Evil Two, the darkness level was absolutely fine. I thought it was good, but Resident Evil Six, that was ridiculous. It was absolutely unwatchable. But I, I mean, th that is the the tiniest of little things. That is fixable. It's actually, as it turns out, fixable in game. I just didn't know there was a menu to actually sort the <laughs> brightness in game. I didn't even need to all F4, I just got angry at it, admit it. Um, classic rage quit. Um, but that, that's not where my gripes stop. Now, um, like clearly like they, they've added a whole bunch of new things and they changed a bunch of mechanics. It felt, it still felt like you were uh, controlling like Resident Evil 4, sort of moving forward and that, but they've added in kicks um, and they added in like a, a quick heal and for the few zombies that I did kill um, I see that they're dropping ammo and health left right and centre and I'm like alright okay <laughs> this is the new the new meta just give me ammo all the time I'm not need, gonna need to search for it in the mansion or something like that um, that's, that's okay I can get my head around that and then I found that um I was also just kicking them as well, so right, like you could um, you could stomp them, which is a good um, addition, which I quite like. But also you can just use that button to kick zombies and punch them and things like that. Oh, okay, cool. They've added a bit of that in. But what was annoying me the most, beyond all of this, was everything was a quick time event. I am more than happy to sit and watch a film of an action sequence going on. I don't need to be involved. But this seems to involve you at every single split action. And not even in a very intuitive way either. So, like, the options that I saw were, like, press A at just the right time to open a door or to run, really hold down the run button to run away from like uh, a car exploding or and things like that um and then i think the first thing that i had to do was run away from like a plane that had fallen into the ground and everything was exploding so I'm doing the running thing see some zombies and, like ignore the zombies and run away and then i had to press buttons so like climb up on cars climb up on cars all right okay fair enough and then there was a helicopter uh, which apparently I jumped for. Okay, right. I jumped onto it, and then I got a <laughs> then I got a quick uh, quick time event, which was a I don't know what it was. It was like a, a waggle in the middle of the screen, and I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And by the time I kind of worked it, oh, it wants me to rotate. Um, I fell into the fire and died. <laughs> Uh, so it's just like, I can die during 
was essentially a cutscene. <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck is this? Um, so I, I thought, all right, okay. It's allowing me to continue. I'll probably just continue from there. Like, no. I had to watch the whole cutscene of a plane falling into the ground, do the running away, and I thought, you know what, this time with the running away, I'll maybe kill the zombie as well. Because I, I, I passed it, I thought, there's bound to be some sort of secret or special, maybe even achievement or something like that. Kill the zombie, get hit by a car, game over. And then it's like, you fucking kidding me? Press the button, and then I'm back, looking at a fucking plane, fall into the ground, leave a hold, start things exploding. And then I was just like, this is, this is shit. Why am I dying on the fucking cutscene and not when I'm actually in the action? Alt F4. And I'm not even sure I'm even going to go back to it. It's like the worst in a game. Like I know that quick time events are like they're a cliche of, of like this is how bad games can be. And God of War is like ultimately a big quick time event sort of thing. And maybe that's what Resident Evil Six was trying to sort of um, what's the word gain some traction from um, from that whole sort of thing, but. It is not for me in any fashion. But change my mind. But <laughs> well, oh, I, I don't know because, like I said, it, I kind of blasted through Resident Evil Six. It wasn't even that much hoovering up to do either in terms of collectibles, as far as I recall. Um, and I did enjoy it. it. It does have a bit of a ropey start because I can't even remember. Is that where you start off in the school in Fake Harvard? Uh, no, you you wake up um, after driving your car. You've had a car accident. You've got some woman with you who I don't know, Helena. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about that completely. And uh, yeah, you drag her because she's not feeling very well. And um, it's like one thing that I quite looked, thought was quite funny is like um, Honeygan turned up and they're like, Honeygan, excellent, fantastic, how you doing? And she sort of turned up and said. Uh, how are you doing? Or oh, maybe you can make her feel better. Is there any herbs around? And I thought this is brilliant. <laughs> they're, they're like actually actively acknowledging that you just find a herb and sort of place it near you, and somehow you've taken the herb and you, you you're feeling much better now. She just says, "Oh, I think I'm going to make it." And it's just like he just wants a, a herb near you. <laughs> you know? it's like, but yeah, I, I, like that. Um, yeah, I mean that's that was fun, but it's far from like uh, what I was expecting. It still doesn't make up for the fact that I was dying during a cutscene. Well, so I was gonna, I was gonna say um, after that, quick time events have been a big part of Resident Evil since Resident Evil Four. Do you not remember? Do you, yeah, remember, do you remember? Do you not remember the Krauser knife sequence? <laughs> Yeah, 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 I do. <laughs> you just endlessly <laughs> dying with a knife fight. Um, and then you think it's... But that's slightly different from, like, a cutscene, as opposed to... It's more like a boss fight, and it is high-strung energy. This is... This is just... It's a cutscene. You run away from the thing, you jump on a helicopter. Oh, cool. I don't need to be involved there. <laughs> Uh, the Krauser thing, yeah, I get you. Yeah, it's quick time events are quick time events. I, my argument is a little paper thin, but I don't know. I feel like being thrown into that so early and so harshly. I just like, what the fuck? But well, I think um, uh, the other way I feel about it is uh, Resident Evil Six is uh, where the series is trying its hardest to be. Um, the most popular uh, and if I recall correctly it's around the time that that disastrous um, what was it the squad shooter Umbrella oh god yeah so that came out uh, it wasn't very good yeah. I played it and it was just it was really bad uh, so yeah so it was a lot of kind of um, most popular conventions um, the setting was a bit generic. Yes, it had Leon and Chris in it, which, you know, was fantastic. Love both those characters. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, it was just 
very kind of flimsy and you can kind of burn through it very action paced this is chris is most uh kind of muscly um the enemies aren't particularly uh memorable either um aid is in there as well uh and then they kind of hit the big reset button when it comes to seven you know completely you know almost hiding the fact that it was resident evil um for the majority of uh seven's game uh but one of the reasons why i remember anything about it at all is because uh i love maybe even more so than the main series the revelation spin-offs again resident evil games which you've not touched so revelations and revelations 2 uh well I mean, yeah go on but in the um raid modes um particularly revelations 2 um in order to just quickly use the the kind of assets i think you play in a lot of stages set on resident evil 6 um and so that so i've got a lot of familiarity with those but it's through revelations 2's raid mode rather than uh through resident evil 6 itself and then the online component of resident evil 6 was so strange you could play the role of some of the kind of you know zombies but not the zombie you know the whatever the ninja zombies or whatever they are now in, in six uh and I played, I must have played maybe an afternoon of that. So you sort of jump into somebody else's game um, and then you're kind of hidden behind the scenery waiting for them to pop up and then, you know, they, they kind of um, decimate you. Uh, which was interesting, but again, just yet another thing that seemed to be seemed to be for... for uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or, so, yeah like kind of yeah. selling, you know, kind of so, selling out. Um, it was Resident Evil selling out, which is ridiculous because it's a, you know, a, a great selling series. But it was wasn't doing its own thing, um, and I think the game uh, kind of suffered a little bit from it. But then, like I said, I loved Revelations um, uh, and Seven, uh, and the remakes are fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely a, definitely a dip. <clears throat> Um, yeah, but I didn't find it unplayable. So yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. Uh, I, do, I do remember. I was so we played it split screen co-op, uh, and at one point you're kind of in this corridor, and the corridor locks, and zombies are pouring into the windows, and then me and the guy I was playing it co-op with, you know, essentially you're just ninja flipping and kicking everywhere. <laughs> All these <laughs> zombies. It's Leon, you're like, is this, is this really the feel of Resident Evil? Um, you know, it, it's almost having a, a, you know, kind of kung fu sequence in a corridor with a bunch of zombies. Um, yeah, I remember that. And then oh, there's Pierce who's unmemorable, and then kind of Chris has a wobble, and then Leon has a wobble. Uh, then there's the big ogre type things. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot in there, but. I would. I reckon I'd be surprised if I started playing it again. Like, oh yeah, I sort of remember this. And there's also a bit where Ada's on a submarine, and it's a stealth mission, and it's fucking awful. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. Sure. Sure. Um, <laughs> well, again, you probably not changed my mind, and you haven't really made me want to go back and burn through it I think I, well, it might be worth giving it one well, last well, shot uh, in co-op unless the PC version doesn't have co-op. couch co-op oh, yeah yeah it probably doesn't <laughs> or it only dies until May 2020 for some reason <laughs> or something stupid like that um, or somebody has to play as a the, with the mouse and keyboard or something <laughs> stupid you know it's that sort of shit that you need to go through um, but yeah uh, well uh, the other thing I was going to say and you kind of touched on it briefly was is it worth skipping this entirely just go to Revelations yeah I, I'd say I'd say yes because uh, did I I don't know if I bought you Revelations but you own Revelations and Revelations too, right I also like own deluxe oh. versions of them because uh, there was like a 
a bundle uh, which had everything <laughs> included. Um, and because Rev, because the best way to play Revelations, uh, I would argue, is it couch no, co-op? is on um, the 3DS when Street Pass was a thing. <laughs> so, oh, so that's... okay, good. <laughs> Go back and play it. Uh, yeah, but yeah, because uh, I mean the story, the, the single player uh, kind of story holds up still. But the raid mode in that was fantastic because um, I wasn't really, I was never a huge fan of the mercenaries um, in four, and then uh, the mercenaries came out as its own game, and I don't know, I just didn't like the time pressure element of it and kind of knowing the level layouts. Um, but the raid mode in Revelations is much, much better. Uh, and I, I reckon I spent hundreds of hours in in raid mode on Revelations and currently on Revelations 2. Uh, but one of the great things is when you street past somebody, they would appear randomly uh, as a zombie in one of your kind of levels. Yeah, I remember you like sent me an image of like, you shooting me, um, I think it was a regenerator or yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, and, so the, and so the raid mode is, you know, essentially you have a, um, a bunch of gear and the gear has levels and it has slots and you can kind of get high level things by doing different missions. Uh, and then the different enemies kind of scale and have different abilities. Yeah, really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and they kind of expanded that on Revelations 2. Arguably too big, but yeah, playing it on the 3DS and um, just having, just knowing that you'd street past a bunch of people, so you'd have some uh, kind of named zombies hiding in your levels with, uh, you know, rare, slightly rarer drops, um, was enough to just keep kind of logging in and playing it, and kind of. Um, so yeah, I really, really enjoyed both of those. Um, Revelations, I think, for the story mode, more than Revelations Two, um, but then Revelations Two is is uh, proper. Um, co-op all throughout and I'd, I'd love for us to play Revelations 2 together in co-op <laughs> but you've got it on the Switch yeah this is the, <laughs> I've got it I've got it I've got it on the <laughs> Switch and the uh, and the 3DS um, although there was some weird because I remember um, so they released Revelations on the 3DS and then they ported it everywhere and then there was something really strange about the Switch version like you couldn't buy a physical bundle you could buy a bundle but one of them was digital um but it takes up like 10 gig which is you know most of the system memory before you put in a, a sd card uh yeah really really yeah. stupid so there's something weird about the switch physical version for revelations i think um but yeah playing that on hd would be great so yeah i think I don't know. I don't know whether they've aged well because when did Revelations come out? I, um, I would say probably about six years ago. <laughs> uh, oh my god, same year as six, 2012. Right, okay. Wow. Why am I playing all these old games? Well, this is, I think this is more, <laughs> this is more realistic and this is one of the things that I like. Uh, what, I like about what we've been doing with what you're playing um, because you know if you follow the the kind of gaming press or the kind of uh, streamers and YouTubers and whatever uh, you know you get these hypes for games which have just come out and obviously some of that sponsored content and the kind of gaming sites have to fall over themselves to get the latest coverage um, but it's really kind of I think it's really unrealistic for how most people who are older than their twenties actually, you know, play and consume games. Um, yeah, I, know. I mean, it's, it's such a different beast when you start getting involved and following a Twitch streamer that you like. You're ending up just sort of like playing a game with them, and they're almost dictating this is a good game that you will like to play because you like me, you know. And, and that's all that is, you know. Um, yeah, it bothers me, and it's like. You've had the, um, you've had like controversies with these streamers that have just sort of said this game is dead now, and you know there's actually been physical, not physical, um, statistical drop-offs because of like a streamer saying this game yeah. is dead now. You know, like all oh, right, 
you know, blah blah blah. Said this is shit. Okay, not playing it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Whereas you know the games that we've been talking about in this kind of what you're playing, some of them to me feel you know new because. Um, either I've just picked them up or, you know, like, uh, what was the one you were playing the other day? Gone Home, you know, seven-year-old game. Yeah. I was playing Super Mario Galaxy 2 uh, because, yeah, you know, realistically, you perhaps um, pick them up and they're laying around for a bit or, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I'll get around to that when I finish doing this. Um, yeah, and so it's kind of cool. Ironically, the, new, the newest game that I'm playing is actually the remaster of fucking World of Warcraft yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I mean, right now is a really strange time, right? Because between WoW Classic, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 3 Remake, Final Fantasy 7, um, it, it really feels like, you know, late 90s version 2. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so I played half an hour of Resident Evil 6. Interesting. Uh, I'm almost yep. tempted to um, pick it up again um, and have a think. Well, I because, yeah, again, like I said, I don't really remember it, um, but I don't remember feeling that bad about it. I was so angry, um, like, you know what I'm like, you know, I was just like, what is this? Why is this doing this to me? Over and over and over, and I was just like, fuck this. Like, I w- it was almost like, I was I was giving it a bone, you know, it's just like, throwing a bone, go on Resident Evil 6, impress me, see how you, see if you can suck me in, you know? But then, it just failed, it just did so badly. Like, you know, I don't know what a good analogy is. <laughs> but then, you know, how much of that is because because it's an eight-year-old game, right? You know, it's sat alongside know. Oh, I mean, it's, it's part 2012. Part of that did actually um, echo through because when I was playing <clears> it, I was thinking, yeah, you know, like a while ago when games used to have a shit ton of quick time events in them. And like, I didn't like quick time events then, and certainly don't like them now. Now that they're like less popular in games, oh, less popular in games, would you say? Oh what? Quick time events less popular. Um, in games. No, I think they, I, I think they, uh, they've had their place now solidified within the broader kind of gaming architecture, right? So alongside exploding barrels, picking up audio tapes, quick time events. Are, are kind of there um but they're less they're less kind of embedded in cutscenes, right so you kind of have this playable cutscene where you have to half pay attention have the pad in your hand to pay attention to it's more just integrated yeah. into the general flow of game you know so if you look at something like uh assassin's creed right? essentially that's just a hundred quick time events every minute you know just Climbing up this wall is a quick time. You know, it's a button press to do this, to do this. And you're not actually, if you look at your, how you're manipulating the controller versus what you're doing on the screen, um, everything's kind of a mini quick time event. You know, it's just it's just pressing buttons. So I think it's kind of ingrained in there. They still come up every now and then. Um, uh, Resident Evil 3 obviously has them. Um, yeah, but they're not they're not so punishing in Resident Evil 3. And also like they the way that they were integrated were just like do this way, crawl in this direction. That you know, that I felt a bit better about. This was right, I'm holding on to a helicopter. Why am I spinning <laughs> the controller? Am I spinning it? Am I waggling it? You know, that that's it that is different, I would say. You know, but yeah, I suppose quick thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think um, I was just looking at what else kind of came out around that time in terms of kind of big action. Um, not many things that was making me feel like quick time events. Maybe it's the end of kind of these big cinematic quick time events. Yeah. Well, I, I remember 
God of War. Um, I think that was God of War PS3 time. Uh, it was like full of quick time events and that sort of fashion. For an action brawler, there was too many quick time events. Yeah. I don't know. I never played it, but I'm genuinely going off of second hand uh, <laughs> reviews and conversations about God of War. <laughs> it might not even have that many quick time <laughs> events. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely, I definitely remember it being, yeah, part of the discussion. Because um, it just felt like for a while there was nothing but, you know, corridor shooters, quick time events, uh, and that was it. Um, and for whatever reason, we now seem to be, we seem to be back in the land of having a little bit more diverse kind of games on offer. Yeah. Mm. Lots of them. Speaking yes. of other games, what have you what been playing? Well, uh, <laughs> to kind of cap off. Uh, the reward for plugging in all the Wii U business the other day. I've been playing Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, uh, which is probably oh, one of my favourite uh, Wii U games. Um, it's subsequently been ported. I recommend that you pick it up if you're interested in it, uh, anyone who's listening. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, Captain Toad, who was in Super Mario Galaxy 2, so that's I think that's why... I also was thinking about it uh, in Super Mario Galaxy, in both in both of them. Uh, and Captain Toad is your set in little vignettes um, with you know a kind of fully th- you can rotate it three in three hundred sixty degrees, uh, and each mission you have to um, find a star. Uh, uh, so, but you as Toad, you've got virtually no tools in your toolkit you've got a lamp which you can turn on and turn off you can't jump um but if you kind of walk up some stairs and on a platform you can drop down to uh and so it's it's lovely um beautiful kind of music and bright graphics um there's hidden gems on each level and to get all three uh you really kind of have to do some nosing around and then each level has a uh an extra secret so you know collect 80 coins or whatever because there are some which are hidden uh, and the enemies are largely you know denizens of the mushroom kingdom so you've got goombas shy guys uh, piranha plants etc um, but it, it, it's one of those games that really feels like you're looking into a toy box so it reminds me of um, a bit like Zack and Wiki and Ghost Trick I don't know if you ever, did you ever play Ghost Trick? No. okay well yeah, on the DS, yeah, yeah. And it's just fun. It, you know, the the feeling of looking at a cutaway, almost like looking at a doll's house. So this feels like, you know, a, a tiny little doll's house and it's just you and uh, the mission to get through. So I'd played through all of it apart from... Um, so it just keeps going and going and going. Um, you know, you get to the credits, uh, or you get to a bunch of credits, uh, and you think, oh, okay, you know, that was a nice... Uh, you know, nice self-contained game, plenty of stuff to go back to, and then an episode three unlocks, uh, episode two unlocks, and then an episode three unlocks, and then right at the end, um, is one of these typically Nintendo ridiculous challenges, um, which I've never managed to complete. Uh, so when I moved everything over from, uh, I was rejigging some stuff on the Wii U, I think, and so I wiped my progress on Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Um, deliberately because that's a game that I would like to play through again Um, but one of the added bonuses that came out that quite a few people were talking about when it came out is if you have the Toad Amiibo as I do um, on each of the levels you can tap it uh, and then it becomes a game of see if you can find the little pixel Toad Um, and and it's kind of like yes it's kind of like doing the whole game all over again um, with this slightly uh, slightly different challenge. Uh, and for ages, ages, I've been stuck on this one level where I couldn't find the pixel to, you know, you think, oh, you know, hide and seek, you know, touch the toad on the bottom screen, like a really kind of kiddie thing. Um, but they really tuck them away. Sometimes they're obvious and sometimes, uh, and the only clue you get that you're near is um, if you're kind of near the pixel toad on the level, you'll hear, oh, you know, like a pixel, little pixel or whatever that weird noise that toads make um and so yeah so so i thought i've got 
time ahead of me, uh, time for me to try and find this t- missing toad that I couldn't find. Um, and I eventually found it. Uh, and so, yeah, I've just been playing that. And really, really, yeah, really, really enjoying it. Um, it's just a great game. And I think most people who have played as well also say, yeah, it's a great game. All right, okay. I I mean, like, this is one of these ones that I thought, okay, I I could do that if I didn't have a million other games to play, but it's not been, like, top of the ones of games that I would want to play or even enticed me that much. Yeah, I have enjoyed. um, Initially, I I thought, you know, uh, I don't know, it's really hard to describe, but there's something about the aesthetic of that game that makes you feel like, hmm, is that really a forty-five pound game? Do you know what I mean? Even though, yeah, yeah, yeah even yeah, though no, it is, exactly. you know, and it uh, and with you know other greats from Nintendo, there's obviously you know, lots of polish and depth and you know replayability and lots of things to do, and that's before you even get the amiibo. Um, but yeah, I think that's what initially put me off. I was like, you know, yeah, it looks great, but you know, forty-five pounds a little puzzle game, and um, that weird kind of again psychology of, of what a game should and shouldn't be and what a game should and shouldn't cost um but yeah it's one that i've absolutely not regretted getting i think you can probably pick them up cheap for the wii u now because i think it's one of the in the you know the it hit the classics range i think since 15 quid or whatever it was but it's only yes on and it's switch. slightly expanded in switch as well i'm not too sure how um maybe cool um, is there DLC or something? Uh, yeah, I seem well? to remember. Uh, there was something extra. Um, maybe you could play as Toadette or something. Uh, I am looking it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because she's yeah, she's kind of a uh, damsel in distress. Uh, I don't know. There was definitely something extra, and there's a demo available, I think, on Switch. So yeah. If you think you might fancy it, download oh. the demo, and it's just tons of that over and over again. Yeah. Cool. Solid. Awesome. What are you um, playing? Well, I'm going to let you have another go, because uh, I'm going to ruin everything, and I'm going to say it's the uh, one that we're both okay. going to talk about. So give me another one. Okay, so what else have a you played? very small uh, kind of game, which I spent a little bit of time on, is a game called Consider It, um, which consider it consider exclamation it. mark. Uh, it has another title, uh, which I'm just desperately trying to look up on the Switch. <laughs> Cookie Yomi. Consider it. Kukiomi. Yes. Uh, and so it's, I don't know if it was originally conceived as a Japanese language learning tool, but it's it's partly in English, partly in Japanese. Uh, I think I actually oh, right, okay. this on Steam. <laughs> Have you played it at all? <laughs> no. No. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's a lovely little game. It doesn't take you too long to kind of go from beginning to end, but there are a bunch of extra modes. Uh, where you are you play an active role in a bunch of scenarios and it's up to you whether you uh, act in a considerate way or you don't and there's no consequence to doing either um and it's just fun but it's also slightly because it's uh, kind of steeped in in japan and japanese culture some of it some of it's slightly opaque as well and so some of the, you play through, I think you play through a hundred different events uh, and it will be stuff like you're sitting on the tube and a couple comes along. Um, you can either choose to scooch along so that they can sit together, uh, you know, or scooch one, in one direction so they have to sit behind a pole or scooch behind the pole so they sit there. Uh, another scenario is you go to the zoo with your girlfriend and um, a bunch of, uh, a pair of lions are copulating um, what do you do? <laughs> do you stand and stare? You know, it's, it's very much like WarioWare Inc. Um, in that, you know, yeah, 
you've yeah, got two seconds to make a decision. Thinking, yeah. <laughs> you normally control the kind of red thing on the screen, um, and you kind of have to work out, you know, what the what the controls are. Uh, another little example, I won't give too many away because it kind of um, will ruin them when it comes to them. Is uh, you are asleep in bed, awake, and Santa kind of comes along, so you can either choose to stay awake or lay down, and that's you know that's your option. Um, so yeah, that's kind of fun. There's a co-op mode which I'd like to play uh, at some point with somebody. I'm not too sure the challenges are different or how it works out. Um, uh, how it works out as being co-op, or whether you kind of it's different scenarios or you take different turns to do it. Uh, and then once you kind of whiz through it all um, with a really harrowing credit sequence, actually, um, after the really harrowing credit sequence, uh, you unlock a whole bunch of things. So there's inconsiderate mode um, where you have to try and be as inconsiderate as possible uh and yeah it's great uh i think i picked up picked up for three quid um uh and i've gone back to it a couple of times just to try different things uh, and then some of the challenges like i say are very steeped in japanese culture so not entirely sure what the considerate or inconsiderate thing would be or, or what even you're supposed to do in some of them yeah you, you can yeah yeah uh, and then every <laughs> i think every 10 tasks or so you get a rating uh, and the ratings don't particularly make sense either so it's, it will say something like you're moderately considerate or you're quite considerate um but it, it's not clear if you did best or if you didn't do best at all um yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, fun, yeah, yeah cheap. you know it's not gonna, it's yeah. not gonna take you forever um it made a little bit of waves when it came out, I think, because, uh, you know, it was one that, that people were playing, probably the streamers did for a stream or two. Um, uh, and I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, good. Excellent. Yeah. That seems like a fun one. Um, yeah, like, I'm, I'm just excited yeah. because I, I think I have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think, one. and, you know, spin it up awesome. with them. Um, Loved ones and partners, because uh, it's kind of a really easy one to kind of play together. Cool. Um, so, what are you playing? Well, what we have been playing on and off occasionally is the oh, Jackbox yeah. <laughs> You've been wanting to do something about the Jackbox series for ages, but hating yourself. <laughs> ah, really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, we played, like, we, I, I've been, like, an avid follower of it. Like, I think, yeah, it was about Jackbox 2. We played it, and we thought, this is such a fun game. And then every single time there's been a new Jackbox pack come out, I'll just straight up buy it straight away, you know, and the thought of the next time you come over, we're going to play it, you know? Um, and... It's like it's, there's not even a single player mode. There's not even like that much so, in the way of two player. So assume there's just straight up. You assume have, to have a bunch of friends. You know, someone has been living under a rock because I think, I think a lot of people know what Jackbox Games is. Very quickly, what's the what's the two minute pitch for what Jackbox Games are? Jackbox is essentially a game simulator of a kind it kind of uh, simulates um, Pictionary it simulates uh, charades um, it even has a quiz mode and basically what you do is on the screen it has quizzes, questions or some kind of um, scenarios which you play out but you play out, play them out on your phone so what's happening on screen and the players are playing get different messages on their phone and they interact with the game in certain ways so very 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 all encompassing um, <laughs> yeah uh, it's, it's kind of, the, it's very, kind of the, very, very simply, there is a quiz yeah very very simply the quiz version is there is questions that come up on the screen you have to decide what the answer is if for some reason further down the game you've been knocked out for whatever reason you still get to yeah. interact uh, as a fourth player to yeah so i'd say it was the whatever, you know? spiritual successor yeah. to party games like buzz 
and uh, you know, Trivial Pursuit. Um, yeah, WarioWare, Mario, Mario Wario Party, except well. instead of having to have a console and all the controllers, um, as long as you've got a smartphone, you kind of log in via the web uh, and you use your phone as the controller. And it is straightforward. It's like it's it's not even a um, you don't need to download an app. It's just go in your browser, boom, and you're there and you're involved. It is parent friendly. And then, so how many you know? Jackboxes are there? Seven, eight, six, six, six. and each six. Each the compendium six has yeah. four or five different games. Five or six different games. There's, yeah, Not all of them are of. fantastic. Um, no. Uh, and some of them are just direct sequels of other ones as well. Like, I, I don't know how there is... It's basically like the question packs. If you get through all hundred of those questions, uh, or not questions, but question packs, then you've got the sequel to it. You know, you don't know Jack 2 and you don't know Jack 3. So, uh, yeah, you're, you're getting repeated, but it's the same content over and over again sort of thing. But, yeah, not all of them are good. <laughs> Some of them are really bad. And, in fact, just not fun either. You know, it's like they're not super playable. They're quite... Um, they're almost... What's the word? Um, yeah. Forgettable. Um, you know, it's like you can kind of play them, and like you press a button, and it makes a character go up and jump like in a gravity dome. And, like this is not like super high tech, um, you know, super <laughs> low latency gaming. Why are we doing it? You know, like so they they yeah. definitely added a few characters in there, but yeah. we have some favourites. Like we've played through a whole load of them. Um. Oh fuck! I forgot the name of it. What's the name of the giant <laughs> I don't robot know. robots? But that that one is a good <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, and the whole concept behind it is like you're kind of given some rhymes to do, um, and you have to like you can elect other people to choose the words, or you select a noun and then you have to rhyme it with something and basically you end up doing a trash talking rhyme yeah. to another giant robot um, and uh, because they've used whatever talking software it is it's all robotic voices so it's all deadpan and it, it's just so funny when you really, like um, we've done so many of them where it's just uh, you end up writing filth and you end up writing the most obscene silly things um, and it's just got this deadpan robot sort of quoting it. Um, but it's tough to do some of those rhymes. And you, it's actually, it's fun when you go up against someone and, and genuinely it feels a little trash talky. <laughs> yeah, that is good fun. Good, good fun. Uh, what other ones do we like? Is it Drawful? Drawful, yeah. I mean, ultimately, that is the penis drawing simulator. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's Pictionary. It, it's ultimately Pictionary, uh, which you get to play with lots of other characters and every, uh, sorry, other players, and then everybody votes on each other's um, drawings and who's the winner of what sort of thing. I think our all-time favorite is patently stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other. Before we talk about Pay Stupid, that's the other thing is, you know, it's all set around uh, essentially like a sort of like a TV quiz. Everything's in, uh, everything has a host or a narrator, a very quiz style. Uh, yeah, it has, it has a narrator. Has a narr narrator. Has a narr um, but if you listen to yeah. what they say, you know, it's it's, it's very self-deprecating kind of deadpan um but there are some there are some actual laugh out loud moments in the in the commentary uh and some of the songs and you know the credit songs um are fantastic um so i think i think that's uh, that could have been done in a really cringy way you know so again going back to buzz 
uh, you know, he, he gets quite annoying as a fake game show host. Um, but for the Jackbox games, it's generally a bit kind of more um, tongue in cheek. Uh, there's silly voices, uh, you know, taking the mick out of <sighs> hipsters, young people, millennials, all of that stuff. Um, yeah, very <laughs> cynical. I think it's got a very, very kind of dry, yep. cynical, yep. but American sense of humor. I mean, it's absolutely fine, and uh, yeah, you, you're you've hit the nail on the head there. It's actually, it's like, it's quite. You, it is self-deprecating enough that it's not taking itself too serious, you know. Like, if it did take itself too serious, it, it would be yeah. less accessible, I think. And I think that's what it, it's just fun. Um, so but yeah, tell me more about stupid. Steve, what's stupid um, is one. It's a game where you start off and on your phones you have to define a problem that needs solving, ideally through an invention. Uh, then those ideas, and I think a bunch of random ideas, um, are, if you can't think of your own ideas, are then distributed amongst the other players. And then you have to find, um, an invention to solve that problem. Uh, so you, you have to do a little sketch. You've got like two colors and, and have sketch you can do with your finger on your phone then you write a title for your invention and then kind of the strap line for the invention and then the best bit about it or i think the bit that makes it work is that you then kind of uh which is really interesting because you know when you do kind of like icebreaker things in meetings at work it's really cringy um good icebreaker game um uh for those kind of office culture but they, you then have to present your invention and then just by you know you can choose when to reveal the drawing the title and the strap line uh, and you have you know I think a minute not even that to uh, invention and then you kind of all vote for which your favorite second favorite third favorite was uh, and that's the one that that has really made us kind of um, chuckle with some of the kind of uh, inventions and ideas and, uh, and it's all about the presenting side of it as well I think Yeah, it's like the actual pitching of it, and like you can get really into it. Like if you're, if you've sat there and you, you're giggling at your old drawings and strap lines and stuff like that, then you just know <laughs> yeah, what you're yeah. going to pitch that and do it <laughs> and uh, laugh yeah. about it. But yeah, but yeah, um, like other than that, I mean, they they have variations of the the Pictionary style one. There was one which is. Uh, I think it's like uh, bid on it or something like that and it's sort of like supposed to be like a fake auction so you have to try and create a piece of art um, and sell it for the most and there's secret um, codes that get sent to your phone as to yeah this one is actually going to sell for X amount or that one you know is not going to sell particularly well and basically you get to see everyone's drawings um, and depending on what sort of rating they've been given you've got to try and get the most money out of the rest of them as well that, that, that's, that's yeah. a good warm up one yeah yeah it's, so it's, the, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's essentially it's very clever um, remixes of classics like charades and Pictionary um, but executed you know in a really kind of highly polished and functioning fashion um Size. The best part is, it's like even if the game ends up lasting half an hour, like one of those full patently stupid, everything is chopped up in a nice little bite-sized minutes of like, here, yeah. do this, do this now, let's do this. Thing. Yeah, and it, it, it yeah, I think the genius well, stroke of going. everyone having to use their phone as the controllers, you know, kind of gets over the um, gets over that barrier when you give somebody who you know hasn't played mini games or games at all when you give them a joypad it's like you know use this to, so everyone knows how to use their phone uh uh yeah it's kind of a great equalizer and and then you've been struggling because you've wanted to write something about jackbox games for the blog right for a long time and just can't quite <laughs> figure out yeah, how to do it without time, sounding really but... earnest you know is jackbox the new is Jackbox the new reason? I mean, you heard my <laughs> explanation of what Jackbox was. 
the thing I just said no more than five <laughs> minutes ago, and it was rubbish. It was an all encompassing yeah. nonsense. <laughs> when I shouldn't have gone into the specifics of what like each one of those games, but ultimately, the bottom line for all of this thing is I think they're fun and they're really good co op games, and they're so simple and accessible. That is the bottom line. Yeah. There's nothing much more it's to just, say it's... about uh, Jackbox. You know, it's yeah, it's, like, just, it's just that. They're dead yeah. certified. For me. Um, yeah. And interestingly, I mean, I I don't know. I don't know if there are many other people working in that same uh, space, or whether Jackbox have just kind of cornered that market with the with the recognizability. Um, but it's I've seen it's nothing like one of the few like ways that um, couch co-op, bless it, which has kind of been a theme actually of today's podcast. Um, that it still, you know, that it still persists, yeah, suppose... because that's you have so many great, you know, just that difference of when you're sitting next to somebody and you're playing a game with them, um, and so you can kind of interact with with them, you know, within the game and outside of the game. It's just phenomenal, uh, and it's kind of sad that whereas it used to be a standard feature, you know, is that games had to be if they had multiplayer, they were couch co-op, whereas now it's kind of, you know, they're online. Um, but Jackbox is kind of one of those areas where it really excels because uh, I mean we did we did we did a uh, socially distanced Jackbox games. I mean that's the other thing. I, I'm about to say you're focusing an awful lot on the couch co-op side of this, and yes, it was great to all be in a room and have that banter. But we did the socially distant uh, multiplayer thing. It was just <laughs> a pain in the tits yeah, but- to set up. Um, yeah, and you can't use. Say that and it was it was good actually. It was like enjoyable. Good, awesome. But you kind of do lose something without that, you know, immediacy of communication, or you know, being able to hear somebody sitting there chuckling at what they've just put in uh, that everyone's going to see in two seconds. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that being said, it was still quite a good way to set up a game night without having to do use like yeah, simulator um, or actually software and controllers no. and being on the same account as we just mentioned with Re- with Revelations to yeah yeah oh, yeah yeah, yeah same exactly platform. Um, <laughs> which yeah. I was going to ask actually because you've always bought them. How much do they retail for those Jackbox games each? Oh my god! Uh, well, oh, really? they're out in the Switch as well. How that work? Um, same. Principle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, same, same principle. You know, it's just like you buy it for the Switch, and then everybody just connects with their phones. You know, it's like you don't connect to the Switch itself. You're connecting to a cloud server, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's. Uh, Sorry, that sounded really, really Yeah, it was. Uh, it's massively patronizing. Does that make sense to you? Does, does your little brain... What, do does that play it on brain, the computer, eh? on the <laughs> Switch computer? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, they're out on uh, Switch as well. But um, I, I usually... Uh, because it's usually like, I don't know, six months or a year between now actually physically being in a room together. Um to play it I usually just pick them up on deal but they're usually about £15 I think when they first come out they retail around £25 sort of thing so on the Switch probably around <laughs> yeah. 60 quid. yeah with, this, with the Switch tax you could get all <laughs> you can get the first six in a bundle for 75 quid. <laughs> no I don't know I don't oh, right, know. really okay cool um, I could look but I'm not going to <laughs> okay well there we go. Um, we I had a that's all I've got to say for that. Couch um, themed podcast. Sponsored, sponsored podcast. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's leave it then. Uh, until Bye. next time. Bye.